Welcome to the peak of the week. I'm so glad that uh, Lane came up with this idea and we're doing this every week because I don't know about you, but it helps me too to have this little boost in the middle of the week. I remember back when I was in high school uh, and one of the very first verses I ever remembered uh, beyond Jesus wept and John 3.16 was in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. And that verse simply says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now obviously that, that's the King James Version, so because back then that's what we used. But I, I think that's a, a very important verse for us today because it seems like all around us we're being assaulted. Uh, we watch stuff on the media and it's depressing. We see things going on in our community and that's discouraging. And you know, it's easy for us to get angry at other individuals and, and over circumstances and yet forget that the real enemy is is the devil and like a roaring lion he comes at us and he tries to isolate us and so a lot of times when we see what's going on around us maybe our health isn't what it ought to be we're scared to death of COVID-19 uh, we're frustrated because we have to wear a mask or whatever and we lash out maybe we lash out at the governor maybe we lash out at the political people maybe we just lash out at each other but we fail to realize that the real enemy is Satan himself. And if you look at that passage in context, and I'm, I'm going to look at this a little bit and kind of read a couple verses, but before verse 8, we see verse 6, and it says, Humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. It also says in the next verse, Cast all your anxiety, your worries, on him because he cares for you. Those are the two verses that are before verse 8. And so two things we see is, number one, we need to be humble. And I don't know about you, but there's too many times when I look at my reactions to things, I go back on Facebook and see comments I've made or at least thought about making, and humility is probably not the characteristic that I would have, uh, you know, used in that sense. And also, you know, I, I preach regularly that it's wrong to worry, but yet I still probably worry too. And it's a lack of faith on all of our parts. Then you see verse 8, but then you go right on down to the next verse. Uh, right on the tail end of that, talking about Satan, he said, resist him and stand firm in the faith. Because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. One of the ways that Satan tries to isolate us is leads us to think that we're the only one. Or even if we're not the only one, we're facing it and it's harder for us than it is other people. That's just not true. And so uh, Paul, I'm sorry, Peter, is telling us you know, to resist Satan, but stand firm in the faith. Then you go down to verse 10, and he says, And the grace of all grace, or the God of all grace, who calls you to his eternal glory in Christ, and listen to this part, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore and make you strong, firm and steadfast. And then in verse 11, he says, To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. It's no secret that these are tough times. And it's also no secret when we think about it, this is not the only time in history there's been tough times. As believers, Satan hates us. He hates that we love God. He hates that God loves us. And he wants to distract us. He wants us to get sidetracked. And he wants us to get down in the dumps. And so we don't have to do that. And just to recap real quick, you know, number one, we need to be humble. Number two, turn our concerns, our worries, our anxieties over to Him. He's got broad shoulders. Uh, th this kind of craziness does not bother God. Uh, he can handle it. Uh, and then also, when it comes to Satan and our temptations to act out, we need to resist Him and stand firm in our faith, remembering we're not alone, and remember that one day, Jesus is going to restore all this. And not only, is Jesus, not only does he say it's going to be restored, it says he is going to restore it. He's got great plans for all of us in spite of this. All this might have been a surprise to us, but it's not to him. I hope you ha are, you're having a great week, and I hope you continue to have a great week. And Lord willing, we'd love to see you either in person or online this weekend at Bedford Acres. God bless, and y'all have a great day.